Psalm chapter 81. To the chief musician upon Gideon. We, uh, I'm not going to go back and look at some more. A Psalm of Asaph. Okay, this is an interesting psalm because we've been looking at doom, destruction. And this almost describes why there's doom and destruction. What it's supposed to be. Sing aloud unto God our strength. You're not to sing aloud so you can make gold and silver and platinum albums. You're supposed to sing to God. You're not supposed to sing, you know, so everybody can say, oh, look how good you are. You're supposed to sing to God. Too many people sing so other people can worship them. There are groups that go around in the world. They go to churches to sing, and they live a filthy life on the outside of what you see. I've known... People come to church, churches I've been in, they come and sing, and they're not invited back out to that church anymore. They say, why not? Because when they're done singing and the preacher gets up and will open your Bible, they go out the back door. One of them was asked by a pastor that a church I, I you know, well, we're, we're done with our performance, so we move on to the next place. If you got a terrible voice, sing unto the Lord. Best places in a car. Windows are rolled up. Make a joyful noise unto, unto the God of Jacob. Is your God of Ishmael? That's not the one. Is your God of Mary? That's not the one. My God, the biblical God, is the God of Abraham. Isaac and Jacob. Sing to him. I can't carry a tune. Sing to him. It didn't say if you can sing or not. Sing. Sing aloud. Take a psalm. What we're reading now. Psalms is a psalm book in the King James Bible. And bring hither the trimble, a musical instrument, the pleasant harp with the psaltery. Musical instrument. Blow the trumpet in a new moon. Blow up the trumpet. I guess Islam would take that literally, blow up a trumpet. Pick up that trumpet, lift it up, and let it sound. The new moon is the first of the Jewish month. Jewish calendar is lunar. So every time it's a full moon, it's a brand new month. And there was, a, there was a controversy in the Bible with David and King Saul. King Saul is having dinner and it's the first of the moon and David wasn't there for two nights. In the time appointed on our solemn feast day, it was the law. It was the law. We under grace, and I'm glad I'm not under the law. There are things you were forced to do under the law that I am allowed to do and willing and wanting to do under grace. For this was a statute, law, for Israel and a law of God of Jacob. The law said the first of the month. That was your set time. The law said you you have to do this and you have to do that. The law is coming back in the tribulation period. The law is coming back in the millennium. This he, God, ordained in Joseph for a testimony. Now we're going to look at Joseph for a few. When he went out through the land of Egypt, 
That's after his brother sold him. Where I heard a language that understood not. He ordained in Joseph for a testimony when he went out through the land of Egypt where I heard a language that I understood not. I removed his shoulder from the burden. Who is that I in verse 5? He, God, Joseph, when he went through the land of Egypt. The he in verse, to begin this, does he... God of Jacob, verse 4, he went out through the land of Egypt where I I don't know if he can say that God does not understand languages. He confused the languages in the Tower of Babel. But he wouldn't understand a language that gave himself to other gods. I, God, removed his, Joseph's shoulder from the burden. His hands, Joseph, were delivered from the pot. So evidently, Joseph in, e in Egypt had a job of cooking or cleaning. And God elevated him. And he ended up in Potiphar's house. Where Potiphar's wife lied, and he was put in jail. Maybe that's where he cooked and cleaned, and then God elevated him by the dream of Pharaoh, and he became the second ruler of all Egypt. Now this is a psalm of Asa. Don't tell me that. Oh, this is what the Asa. You know, back in the book of Genesis. You read the scripture as it is without your interpretation. No, no important scripture is given for our private interpretation. Let's try this. For this was a statue of Israel. A law of the God of Jacob. This he, God of Jacob, ordained in Joseph, tribes of Israel, for a testimony when he went out to the land of Egypt. Joseph was in the land of Egypt, where I heard a language I understood not. Who is the I? I, 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 I. I removed his shoulder from the burden. Well, it can't be Potiphar. Potiphar was Egyptian. It can't be Pharaoh. Pharaoh's Egyptian. His hands, Joseph's hands, were delivered from the pot. Cooking, cleaning, or maybe other kind of work where they use pot. Thou callest in trouble, and I, God, deliver thee. I answer thee in a secret place of thunder. I prove thee at the waters of Meribah, Selah. Who's the I, 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 I? I'm going to leave verse 5 alone. I'm not going to say nothing. Because I'm not going to limit God that he don't know the languages of the world. The only thing could be, if that is God, it's a language. He don't recognize a language that speaks contrary to him. And if that's the truth, God doesn't understand English when it has to do with other gods. Now, verse 7 is truly when they come out of Egypt. And the secret place of thunder is when they're on Mount, not even Mount Sinai because it hasn't happened yet. The warriors of Meribah, where they, they, they overcome the Red Sea, the Egyptians are killed, drowned. And they're coming along, they're happy, they're singing the song of Moses, glory to God. They come to a body of water and they take a drink. <laughs> oh, this is bitter. That's what Mar that's Meribah means. That's Naomi. Oh, Naomi, you're home. Don't call me Naomi. Call me Meribah. 
because I'm bitter. And you see that Sela? The story of that takes place also in the, in the tribulation to uh, the second advent. Sela is a musical wretch, and somewhere within a couple verses of that, you'll find a second advent reference or a tribulation passage. When you read the Old Testament that you don't want to read, you're reading future events that's going to happen again. Moses is coming up again to say, turn the water into blood. Elijah's coming up to say, yeah, how about I just say no rain? How about Pharaoh's going to change, Pharaoh's going to chase Israel with all his men, the Antichrist and all whoever works with the Antichrist. Are going to chase the Jew. And God's going to lead them through a body of water that Satan swallows up and tries to drown them, and the earth swallows up the water. And Israel's on dry ground. And the Lord's army with Joshua, Jehovah saved, comes and picks up Rahab, and she becomes part of the Lord's army. Here, I don't think we have any problem with that one, except for when our big mouths are going. Oh, my people, look at verse 4, Israel, God of Jacob. I'm amazed when I look at, I, I, I don't do it any often anymore, unless I'm really stuck on a verse. I mean, I could have done it for verse 5, as it was. and they're all the church, the church, the church. There is no church in song. Now you can spiritualize it, but what is the historical documentation of the history that Psalms is writing about since it is history? What is the doctrinal application? The church, the church, the church. Yes, yeah, spiritualize. But you also have a historic and a doctrinal. There's three applications of scriptures in the Bible. Historic, it, 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 it happened, and it's a fact. Doctrine. God is teaching something, and you better not change it. You better not change the fact that Jesus said there's a hell. Doctrinally. Throughout the scriptures, the Bible says hell is a place made for the devil and his angels, a place of torment, and men go there. Spiritual application is when you can take it to a Christian's life. Hear my people, and I will testify unto thee. O Israel. Okay, I guess we got it now. I just read today, and I reposted. Oh, boy, who was it? Oh, there's a Bible that just come out. Like, we really need another one. And it has erased or changed every reference to Israel. We'll be the Christian that buys that and, and reads it. If, if, conditional clause, that will hearken unto me. God ain't going to force you, Calvin. God ain't going to make you, Calvin. God says here. And it's up to you, your free will, if you're going to hearken. The word if in the Bible is pretty much a statement to tell Calvin to go jump in the lake. Because if God predetermined some men to go to hell and predetermined that some men will go to heaven, that men will have to do this or men will have to do that, that if would not be in the Bible. There shall no strange God be with be in thee. Book of Judges, 1 Samuel, 2 Samuel, 1 Kings, 2 Kings, Chronicles, Isaiah, Jeremiah. If thou wilt hearken unto me, there shall no strange God be with thee. What are you going to say about Solomon? And this is Asaph, David. Psalms coming up next. 
That guy's going to marry all kinds of godless, small g-o-d-s, small g-o-d-d-e-s-s. If God were to believe in Calvin, and he don't, he would have forced David and Solomon, you marry one wife, and it, and it has to be of your tribe, Judah. You ever read the list of the wives of David and, and Solomon? They were not all of Judah. Have you read the list that it gives of the kings of Judah? And this king, he reigned such and such amount of years, and his mother was such and such of... The law said you can only marry a woman that was in your tribe. So if David, if you know the Bible says the law says you're not to commit adultery. If David did not go out walking that night, if David would have been in battle like he was supposed to. Neither shalt thou worship any strange god and shoo, they don't hearken to that. All right, you want to spiritualize it? Here, my people, the Christian nation of America, I will testify unto thee, O Israel, if thou will hearken unto me, there shall no strange gods be in thee. Catholic, Islam, Mormonism, Seventh-day Adventism, Jehovah Witnessism, Charismaticism, other uh, black uh, gods, the black churches, uh, Republicans, a Democrat, Independent, Methodist, Lutheran, Episcopalian, Congregationalism. Uh, what, what was I saying? <laughs> what gods? In God we trust. You got it wrong. In gods we trust. The Catholics do not trust the God I believe in. I sure don't believe in the Jehovah Witness God, whatever that God is. I am not going to follow the gods of seven-day Adventism, the Old Testament gods. I'm going to follow that. Which God? Oh, no, oh, oh, don't tell me America's of the God of the Bible of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Every single, pre every single president. Republican or Democrat? I said Democrat earlier first. I'm going to say Republican first. I don't want to offend anybody. I have not heard a president foretold the name of Jesus Christ outright and openly. Oh, he said, yeah, it was under the bush kind of thing that the, that the cook heard him say while he was in an office somewhere talking on the phone. Oh, he said, Jesus. I'm talking about in the, in the Rose Garden, in the Oval Office, before the press, with the microphones there, to say, Jesus Christ is Lord, the Lord. Yep, sure, right. No way. No other gods. It's kind of funny, people love money and honor money in God we trust. You know how much money in, in the world is held by atheists. You know the money that we give to the Arabians for their their oil? They're holding money. In God we trust. Their God's Allah. Allah, 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 Allah. God says you're not supposed to have that. Allah is going to bow down before Jesus Christ one day. Say, Jesus. Jesus is the Lord. Israel is not to have any God. And the entire Old Testament, they're, God is whipping their butt. In Jeremiah, they're worshiping the Queen of Heaven. But that's not the same Queen of Heaven of Mary. No, that's totally different. Verse 10. I am. Oh, look at those words. You know why they got upset with Jesus? Jesus said two words that got him upset all the time. I am. And when you say I am to a Jew, 
That is the Jehovah D God. That's capital G dash D. They won't spell out the name of God. They're afraid they're going to misspell it. They're afraid they're going to say it wrong. They have the fear of the spelling of the of God, but they don't have the, the fear of God. He says, I am the Lord thy God, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt. Did America come out of the land of Egypt? Absolutely not. Did England come out of Egypt? Nope. It's only one group of people, one nation, that's Israel. And it will be always for Israel. So you can take that new Bible that's on the market and you can lay it to hells of fire to have a barbecue where they take out Israel and the reference is there too. And you can apply my name to that. That Bible that takes out Jesus, I mean, takes out Israel, the nation of Israel, Stiley Hayward said you can burn that in the flames of fire. That is not the Bible. One nation, I believe in one nation, as Paul says, I pray for their salvation, and I support missionaries that go over there and bring to them the gospel. Glory to God. So I brought you out of Egypt, he says, and open thy mouth wide, I will fill it. The water that came from the rock, all the, the, the quails, the manna. You imagine this, when they when the, when the spies went into went into the Canaan land from Canaan's burning, and they, they had to carry a bunch of grapes. Two men had to hold a bunch of grapes. Man, I tell you right now, and there was you know there's giants in the land. You you can man, you show me a grape like that, I'm gonna go get some giant butt. Just get some of that grapes. God gave them land with milk and honey. God gave them land of figs and vineyards and olives and I'm getting hungry. You know everything in the land of Israel, yummy, honey. Mm -mm -mm. I love honey. Honey's so good. You know how good honey is. Bees will whip your butt because you took it. And bears will fight bees to get honey. Honey is a natural sweetener. But, that's a bad word in the Bible, but. Actually, it can be a good word, it can be a bad word. Here's bad. My people, uh, I wonder who that is, Israel, would not hearken to my voice. Calvin, you're out the window. Bye, Calvin. See ya. Take your dead tulip and probably in hell, I would think. I don't know. If God says you will go to heaven, no matter what you believe, whatever you say, you would think that God told Israel, you're staying in that land and you're going to obey me. Why did they have Baal? Why did Manasseh, the worst king, the, the, the longest reigning king, why is he in Judah reigning with all the wickedness that he's done? Come on, Calvin, explain that to me. And then the king got right with God, and God blessed him. Explain that to me, Calvin. I'm in torment, I can't. If he's in hell today. There are times in my life, if I'm going to spiritualize this verse, God says, Styling, yes. Give that man a gospel trap. You see what that guy looks like for? I give him a gospel check. He's going to yell at me. Come on, Sally. You dealt with bikers. Not me. All right. By the God of Calvin, you give that guy a track right now. Uh -uh. I proved Calvin wrong. Because if it's the way of Calvin, God would say, you need to give that guy. You're, no, 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 no. You're going to give that guy a track right now. Give it to him. We disobey God. Do we not? I do. I'm sorry. To say, and I'm not bragging. I disobey God. Calvin says we do it because God wants us to do it. I wish it was so. Wouldn't it be great if God would put into me to do everything right? But then I'd be a robot. And I would not have the love I do for God. 
There are times that I sin, and you know what? I sin with the flesh. I want to do it. And there are times I repent because, you know, Lord, I really, that, that, Lord, that was not only bad, but, Lord, you saw it. The Holy Spirit was involved. and That's not a robot confession. They would not hearken to my voice, and Israel would none of me. That's the churches today. We got power, power, wonder working power in the blood of the Lamb. Virus? Okay, close the church doors. Close it. We're going to go online. We're not having church doors. Core virus. Where's your power? We don't want to die. Absent from the body, present with the Lord. You mean your God can't protect you? You don't want to have anything to do with God. What do you think God's going to do next time? Because the world, the world has not repented, turned to God. God gave us a virus that got our attention. But our attention didn't turn to God. Our attention turned to well, toilet paper. We've got to find it. We've got to find a cure. We've got to find a cure. We've got to find masks. Oh, I can't find Lysol. And the more we don't repent, and the more we don't turn to God, it, the worse is going to get until the rapture happens. You know, if a man wanted to turn to God, and, and let's say he got so overwhelmed in this, this, this fear core of life, uh, I want to find God, let me go to the church. It's locked. Our services are online. Is it kind of ironic that Revelation chapter 3 says Jesus is standing outside the church door, knocking? Have you ever wondered? I, I thought about this now with coronavirus. You wonder the fact is he's knocking at, on that door because that door is closed. It's locked with a sign. Service is online. And Jesus is like, get online. You want to come have you want to come have dinner with me? Oh Lord, I can't have dinner. The restaurants are closed. Never mind. I'll take care of it. Well, that become more real to me. I don't know about you guys out there, but they would not have of God. I got family that would not have of God. I tell them about Jesus. There are people I, I preach to uh, at the street at the farmers market. They will not have God. And you get some idiot come up to you. God loves everybody. And everybody loves God. And I tell you, you're not in no public ministry. Because from almost day five of my public ministry, about 2005 or six, I learned that the very true fact is not all the world loves me. Then I read in the Bible, Jesus said, no, not the world hated me before hated you. There are people who would none of God. Jewish people would have none of God. You know what they did with God? Crucify him. What about Barabbas? Let him free. Capital punishment is so cruel. It's so inhumane to capitalize punishment. What about Jesus? Crucify him. They were a bunch of hypocrites. Verse 12. So I, God, gave... See, the, who are the eyes in this chapter? It's God. Let me go back to verse 5. Oh, boy. So I, verse 12, gave them up unto their own hearts. It doesn't say desire. It says lust. You know what the worst thing God can do? Besides throwing you in hell? Giving you everything you want. The Bible says in Hebrews to a point in it that Moses gave up the pleasure of sin to suffer for God. I'm talking about Christians now. Yeah, go for it. Go for the world. Go for the gusto. And we get the judgment seat of Christ. And when, when the smoke detectors go off. And you're rushing through the ashes of hay, wood, and stubble. And you find no gold. You find no silver. You find no precious stone. 
then you're going to weep. Weeping doesn't stop until Revelation 21 or 22, I think it's the chapter. God don't wipe our tears away to 21 or 22, Revelation chapter. We're going to weep at the, at the judgment seat of Christ because we're going to find out we've done things for ourselves and we've lost rewards, Second John. I'll tell you what I believe, and I don't, I don't care what people think. I gave money to the church. I tied to the church. All right, IRS 20... Wait, wait, wait. Yeah, let's look. 1040. Okay, where's, where's the line I put deductions? Okay, church said I gave this month. All right, I got my tax deductions. You just got your reward from God on the tax deduction from the government. The government gave you your reward and said it goes to the precious stone. And there are people out there who believe that just like I believe that. Set your affections on things above, not things on the earth. Oh, things on the earth. Paper. Pen. 1040. And then watch God quickly erase that offering in your records because the government gave you something. God will give you, if he's angry with you, he will give you what you want. But it won't be what you want in glory. And when it comes time in glory land, when we are about to cast our crowns before Jesus, as the 24 elders do, and when you realize that moment, you ain't got a crown for all eternity. You have nothing to cast at Jesus. I don't know how that's going to feel. I don't understand that part of heaven. Because there's no envy. But the Christian that you are a Christian, the Christian that you badmouthed, the Christian you insulted, the Christian you gave the hard time, the Christian that you hated, is standing next to you before the throne of God and he's casting crowns down before God, and you have nothing to offer. God said, hey, that's what you want? Go for it. Your softball team is not going to be in heaven. Probably most of your race car drivers are not going to be in heaven. Your gold, silver, that, that gets cankered, that gets destroyed with Mother Earth, that ain't going to heaven. A Christian who wants to do right, and God will help him to do right. God will promote him to do right. He'll get rewards and goodness and glory by God. See, it comes down to this. You invest in God. You wait to see what the interest that God will put in you. I said, when you invest in God, wait till you see the interest that God puts in you. And what is that interest? Gold, silver, precious stones, crowns, inheritance, and he does give us a little blessing here on earth. So, and they walk in their own council. Council is a group of people. What shall I do? I think we should sing hip hop song in our. I think we should turn off the lights for our surf. I think we should go watch the sun come up in the east. I think we should have an egg hunt. I don't think we should have church on Sunday night. Hey, let's, let's get rid of church Wednesday night. I think you can do whatever you want to do. I think we can invite anybody into our church. That's poor, ungodly counsel. And I know preachers that have allowed a couple to shack up, adulterize, fornicate, and all that. Yeah, when you do what you think you're doing, all is well with us. Not all well with God. That's poor counsel. Verse 13. Oh, that my people, Israel, had hearkened unto me. You know, against the Calvary, God says, I wish you'd just listen to me. You know what God tells a Christian? A born again 
Christian that is saved under the blood of Jesus. I wish you listened to me. I wish you just stop, drop, repent, and get right and listen to me. It's for your own well-being. It's for your good. I'm the good father. Jesus loves us. We love him because he first loved us. God says in heaven, I wish you just listened to me when we rebel. Don't worry about the worldly Christian. Because as far as the worldly Christian, God's up in heaven says, I wish you just listened to me. And God uses those that do listen. Uh, I wish you rebuke him. Don't worry. He's not going to listen to you. Why? Because he doesn't listen to me. I'm a street preacher in Daytona Beach at the farmer's market. Every Saturday I try to be there. And I stand there and I preach for 45 minutes or more or less. And I know they're not listening. How do I know? Jesus already said, many will go the broad way. The Bible has already told me. Proverbs chapter 1, there'll be the simple, there'll be the scorners that hate the wisdom. When you are involved in any public ministry, you try to say, hey, listen, this is a gospel track about the Lord Jesus Christ. I don't want that. They're not listening. God's like, I wish they'd just take that gospel track and listen to it. I sent out yesterday, and i got to do it very carefully now. I've sent out chick tracks to my friends on Facebook. And I got rebuked and shut down for a while by Facebook. What did God say? You've done a good job, Sai. I am proud of those feet that spread the good tidings. What's God say about Facebook? I wish they listened. Now, how did my friends react? The Christians loved it. But I bet you there were some Christians that will be Christians, I've, I've done this before, who get angry with me. What's God say? I wish you listened. What about my unsaved friend? Ugh, this garbage again. What's God say? I wish they listened. What about the great white throne judgment? When they try to plead their cause with God. Imagine them telling God, God, Jesus, I wish you listened to me. All right, I'll listen. I think God's actually, I believe God's going to li listen. Time has stopped before the great white throne judgment. I believe God's going to listen to everything they have to say. And then when it comes down to the sentence, what's the sentence? Open the book. Is their name in the book? I could be wrong, but I think God's going to let them talk. Oh, that my people had hearkened unto me and Israel. Oh, that my people would hearken unto me and Israel. I'm going to say, darkly, that could apply to the Christian and Israel. Or he's saying, there are people who are of God who are Israel, and there are people who are in Israel who's not mine. True. King Saul was of Israel, but he was not of God. Had walked in my way. Plural. What were his ways? His statutes, his law. What he said to do, his commandment. Throughout the old Old Testament. And even the gospel, you saw the Jews and the book of Acts, you saw the Jews not doing what God told them to do. And I get a laugh because when people come up to me, I've had a few people tell me, not many, but if God would show himself to me, if God would show me a sign, I will believe. I tell him, you know how many signs God gave Israel and they still didn't believe? The wilderness journey? Say, well, what are you talking about? Let's see. There was an absolute night for Egypt, but not for the Jews. Egypt had darkness. The Israelites had light. Uh, the water turned to blood from Moses and from God. Uh, there were flies in Egypt, but there were no flies in Israel. God opened up the Red Sea, and Israel walked on dry land. Pharaoh tried it in his army, and 
he died, drowned. Moses threw a, a, a tree in the waters that were bitter and they became sweet. It rained manna from heaven. And there's more and more and more and more. They heard God speak from the mountain, Exodus 20, and they still didn't believe. So don't give me if God would have come down. Hey, no, you wouldn't. Well, how do you know that? Because God hung on the cross. And only one man, only one man believed on him. You know that? My God hung on that cross and died for my sin. And that afternoon, that evening, only one man said, God, Jesus, for the Jehovah Witnesses out. When you come into your kingdom, think of me. Where was all? Where were all the Israelites? Where were all the Jews that were blind and could see? Where were all the Jews that had, uh, who were deaf and could, I would love to have here both my ears. One ear is closed up. Where were the lame Jewish people who are no longer lame? Where are the Jewish people that died and were living again? Where were the 4,000 to 5,000 Jews that got that, man, got that bread and fish and they could eat all they wanted at Jesus buffet and not pay for the meal not have to tip for the meal and the disciples got to gather 12 fragments where were they I should soon have subdued their enemy you read the book of Judges have you read Samuels and Kings how did the, the, the enemies of Israel came in. Have you read that Gad, uh, uh, Reuben, Gad, and half tribe Manasseh went into captivity? Have you not read that Israel North went into captivity? Have you not read during Jeremiah, Judah went into captivity? <coughs> Why? Because they would not walk in the ways of God. They would not listen to God. They would have none of none of God. So God said, "Okay, fine. I'm going to let your enemies." overpower you your enemies listening to me is doing more for me than what you're doing for me think about that God told the enemy go in there and beat the daylights out of my children in Israel yes sir da -da 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 -da. and there's prophets while the enemy's coming doing God's j listen the guy came up to Jeremiah the, the, the captain of the guard of Babylon came up to Jeremiah and said, this is because you you guys rebelled against Israel. I mean, God. We have taken over your city because you have sinned against your God. And Jeremiah's like, yep. I tried telling them. What was the problem? They would have none of God. They would not listen to God. So the enemies did more for God then the Jews, the people of God, were there. and there's one time that God told God speaking up in heaven. He says, uh, "Babylon, <laughs> go sack Egypt. Why? Because I didn't pay you for Jerusalem. God paid Babylon by going to Egypt and spoiling to Egypt because He didn't pay them for Jerusalem." And then they got cursed because God said about the Jew, curse them that curse you. And turn my hand against their adversary. God will make your enemies to make God's ally if you sin against God. Think about that. Now, is that not a super oxymoron? Because your enemies should be the enemies of God. And they are getting the victory because you're not living right. That's something hard to swallow. But it's true.
called chastising. The haters, that's the first time that word shows up, the haters of the Lord should have submitted themselves unto him. Who is that? The enemies of Israel? Yes. And the ones of Israel. It's both classes. You can be an Israelite and still hate God and be a hater of the Lord. You can be a Gentile and hate the Lord and still become a hater of the Lord. And for both of them, God says, you should have submitted yourself to me. God is not a respecter of persons. Does he not say Romans chapter 10? You know, he says that, you know, with the heart man believes in the righteousness, with the mouth confessions made unto salvation, neither the Jew or the Greek. But, there's another but, their time should have endured, that's the first time that word shows up, forever. So what's God saying there in the Old Testament? If you had obeyed God, you live forever. If you don't obey God, you don't live forever. Let me put it in the words of John the Baptist. He that has the Son has everlasting life. He that has not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abiding upon him. You know what God calls hell? He says, Though you live eternally in hell, you will have eternal life in hell. According to John the Baptist, living in hell is not really a life to live. And hell will have Gentiles, and it will have Jewish people in it. And what's God say about that? They would have none of me. Oh, they had listened to my counsel. If the Jews would have listened to Jesus, if the Jewish would have listened to the apostles, if the Jews would have listened to the guy that came knocking on their door, if the Jews would have listened to that gospel tract being in the bathroom, if the Jews would listen to the guy screaming and hollering on the street corner, if the Jews would listen to the man at the co-worker. If the American will listen to the person who has taken time to show them an open Bible. If they have African American who has been handed a gospel tract would adhere to what God has to say. If the Spaniards would listen to the man preaching on the radio. If the Chinese man would come into that church he's been invited to and hear the gospel. And what's the answer for the Jews first and then the Greeks that won't listen? They would have none of me. And they depart off in the lake of fire that burns forever. He should have fed them also with the finest of wheat. Wouldn't you say Jesus did that with the barley bread? Where did the... I can't... How do you describe the loaves of extra bread? Where did it come from? They gathered 12 baskets of... A fragment. Whether it be barley or wheat, but let's just whatever it be. Would you not say that's the finest wheat? Because that had to come from heaven, didn't it? it? Didn't come from the baker. It didn't come from the disciples. Can you imagine that afternoon the disciples looking at each other like what? 
Peter, how many loaves have you got? I still got the one. How many people you fed? They're having thirds. And yet, could they not remember the story of Elijah and the widow woman and her oil and her meal and her bread? And yet, when Jesus brought that story up in his hometown, in his own synagogue, they were going to drag him out of the city and kill him. Why? They would have none of me. That's a sad thing. And with honey, oh, there it is, out of the rock, Paul says, that rock is Jesus. Not Peter. With the honey out of the rock, a natural sweetener. Jesus Christ is no artificial preservative. Jesus Christ is no artificial ingredient. He would not be approved by the FDA. You know why? Because Jesus Christ has been approved by God. And when Jesus said, it is finished, and you add to salvation, works, whatever you do, you are adding an additive to something that God never wanted an additive added to it. And that additive is not approved, not by the FDA. That additive is not approved by God the Father. When Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. There's only one way of salvation. I'm the truth, nothing false. I am the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Why won't they come to the Father? They would have none of me. And Jesus Christ cried on the, on the cross, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. With the honey out of the rock, should I, God, have satisfied them? They were never satisfied. God, can you furnish a table in the wilderness? And he brought all those quails and they're eating the quails and the, with the blood and all that. God got angry. He just relieved them from the Red Sea and from the, the Egyptian army. Oh, this water is bitter. <laughs> the water was made sweet, but when they walked a little further, then they found the 12 wells with the palm trees and, and better water. Then they had no food again. Then they had no water again. Then they had no food again. Then they had no water again. And Moses did not get into the into the promised land because Moses about had it with them. And he picks up that rod and says, you go slam. And water came out still. In the rebellion of Moses, the water came out and God said, Moses, what, Lord? Whoa. You disobeyed me. You would have none of me. Yeah, what? You're not going in the promised land. Israel was made to please God and celebrate God. So let me turn it back a little further. Adam was made to please God and he sinned. Israel was made to please God, and they sinned. Christians were to come to Jesus to please God, and I sinned. One day, God's going to give us a brand new body. He's going to give us no more sin. He's going to make us perfect. And what happened? We go to New Jerusalem and we glorify God and we praise the Lord and we give all to God that we're supposed to be doing now without fail. Glory to God. One day I will be perfect. I ain't there yet. You know, some people, some Christians, you know, you think you're better than me? Absolutely not. I am not. I will not be until I get the glory. But 
sing unto the Lord. You can't sing, sing on. I can't sing. I sing unto the Lord. Everybody says I got a good voice. I don't know, but they say I do, so I give it to the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I, you know, people know me. Well, you know, you, you, you know, you, you know, your wife and stuff like. Yeah, I'm still by. I'm thankful in the Lord. I'm praising the Lord. Some nights I, I put the I put the hymns on and the birds will wake up and start singing and having a good old glory time in the Lord. Sometimes I'll be reading my Bible having a good old glory in the Lord. Then I sin. I get down in the dumps. I get, yeah, that's sin. Why? Because I would not have any of the Lord. You see, when we would none of me, the Lord, that's when we sin. So Jesus is knocking. We invite him to dinner. Come on in, Lord. Let's have a meal. And then we let him go. Think of the road of Emanus. I said it wrong. Sorry. They were going to go in, and Jesus was going to keep on going. One time out in the storm, the disciples on the boat, Jesus was going to walk right by them. You got to say, Lord, come on. Come with me. Come, come with me. Lord, I want you. I want much of you. And he'll come in. Well, we come back to Psalms, Lord willing, uh, Psalms 82. Tomorrow's Wednesday, so it won't be Wednesday. We're at church. So hopefully Thursday night, 7 p.m., we'll pick up Psalms 82 as we go chapter through chapter of the Bible. The glorify and God. Uh, get, share these. Tell your friends about them. Learn from the Lord and give God the praise. Don't give me the praise. Give God the praise. Glory to God. Have a good night or day, wherever you be.